In this video, I'll be making a ring box. I'm going to be using this mystery piece of wood which measured about 65 millimeters or two and a half inches square. I thought this was Sapeli at first, but it's much lighter in weight and it's lighter in color, so I'm not sure what it is. I'm only going to need a little bit, so I used a handsaw to cut off the piece I want. And then I cleaned up the faces using a block plane, checking that I was keeping it nice and square using a small engineer's square. Next I'll be using the bandsaw, but before I make any cuts I want to make sure that my table is square to the blade. I then make a cut all of the way through. This piece is going to be the lid of the box and you can see I'm cutting it quite thick. And then I cut the bottom of the box, which I cut much thinner. I mark up a triangle onto the box and this is going to help me put it back together again later in the correct order. I then take the middle section and mark up what will become the sides of the box. I'm using a scrap of plywood here as a zero clearance at the bandsaw just to get cleaner cuts. I cut one side all of the way through and then I can cut away what will be the inside of the box. The bandsaw blade I'm using for this isn't ideal but I didn't have a narrower blade on hand so I'm just using what I had available. I can then glue the box back together again, first assembling the middle part And it was a cold day in the workshop, so I left it by the radiator to help the glue set. While waiting for that, I can flatten the lid and bottom using some sandpaper on a flat surface to clean off all of the blade marks left by the bandsaw blade. And after the middle part of the box had had about an hour to dry, I could flatten the top and bottom of that too. I can then add glue and assemble the box using the triangle I marked up earlier to align things as best I can and I clamped that up in my vise. Once that had had about an hour to dry, I could then start flushing up the sides of the box, starting with my block plane. And I tried planing in both directions here, but I was getting some tear out of the grain, so I started using my card scraper instead just to clean up any tear out. And then I sanded each of the faces. I wanted to carve out a decorative design onto the lid of the box, so here I'm making some marks to help guide me. I used a bevel gauge and a marking knife to cut across the grain. I then marked up a line for the depth that I wanted to cut to. So here I'm scoring across the grain as much as I can with a knife to create a groove for the blade of my tenon saw to fit into. I can then cut down to the depth line using my saw. And then I can get in there with my chisel to remove the material up to the saw kerf and start shaping the rest of the design onto the lid. I don't have many carving chisels, I really need to buy a set, but I do have a gouge which I could use to round over the edges slightly. Oh, 
and then I refined things with some sandpaper and I sanded at 120, 180 and then 240 grit. Next I can mark up an opening for the lid of the box and I decided to cut that at an angle. I can then make that cut at the bandsaw. And then I can flatten both of those surfaces so that they meet together nicely. I needed to do a bit of clean up to the inside of the box using a chisel as well. Next I went looking for a small piece of wood that I could use to line the inside of the box. And I wanted a contrast in colour so I chose a piece of oak. This is an offcut from some of the legendary salvaged oak hat and coat stands that have featured in my videos so many times now. I mixed up some epoxy to glue the oak pieces in place to the inside of the box. I mainly chose epoxy here just for the quick drying time. I clamped the pieces in place and these oak bits are going to allow the lid to seat properly onto the box. And then I can cut them to the same angle as I used for the lid before sanding the top edges flush. I had a bit of epoxy squeeze out to deal with so I cleaned that up with a chisel. For finish I'm going to use some of this shellac as it'll darken the wood and bring out the grain really nicely plus it dries really quickly. But because it dries quickly it's important to keep it wet as you apply and not overwork it as it's drying because that can completely ruin the finish. With the first coat of finish applied, next I'm going to work on the inside of the box and the part that will hold the ring. I have some of this mustard coloured velvet fabric which I used to upholster a puck and old chair in a previous video. I also have some of these packing peanuts which I'm going to use to hold the ring in place. I cut a couple of pieces of the fabric and then apply some of this spray adhesive to the back of the velvet. And then I can shape the peanuts to the size I wanted them to be and apply the adhesive to those too. After a few minutes when the adhesive is tacky I can roll up the peanuts inside the velvet and cut away any excess. I'm also going to use the spray adhesive to stick these pieces to the inside of the box after masking off the areas where I didn't want to get any glue. Here I'm positioning them and trying to get rid of any creases in the fabric. And then I could work more on the finishing so it was just a process of denibbing the shellac to help get a nice smooth finish using some 400 grit wet and dry paper and then applying another coat of shellac and I did that probably four or five times over because I wanted a nice glossy smooth finish. Finally I applied a couple of coats of spray varnish just to help protect the shellac finish. Again I denibbed and reapplied. And I wasn't very happy with the finish I got on the inside of the box initially as I had a small run of shellac in there so I ended up sanding that right back to bare wood and reapplying the shellac. That was the project complete and it took about 14 hours in total. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out and most importantly my better half Rhea said yes. So we're in the process now of planning our wedding next year in June. I hope you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel you can do that via Patreon or PayPal and there's links to those below in the description box. On Patreon you can also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.